Today, you can find glory in learning how to sew your own ski mask. It's a pretty simple pattern. There's not a lot of steps to it, so it's a good way to warm up to knit fabrics. We're gonna sew this together. It's gonna be a breeze. You're gonna need the sewing pattern. There's a link in the description for a free PDF sewing pattern. I try to make these really simple and easy to read because essentially it's a sewing pattern for beginners. Other options, if you don't have access to a large printer, there's a printed version that you could buy. For the fabric, the amount of fabric's written on the pattern, but it's 18 by 25 inches. And you'll want stretch material because this pattern is specific for a stretch mask. I'll be doing another mask with woven fabric that has no stretch, so stay tuned if you're interested in that. And then the DIY kits. It's basically a sewing kit for beginners. Let's say you live in a place where it's difficult to get access to a printer or a fabric shop. There's the option for a DIY kit. This comes with all the material, the stretch fabric for two masks, matching thread, and a paper pattern. Everything you need right to your door so you can open it up, press play, and sew along. I'll be giving away five free DIY kits if you're interested. Follow me on the gram, it's at glory.allen, and I'll post contest details real soon. Now for the materials and supplies, ideally wash your fabric first to avoid any shrinkage, and then if you have the option, use polyester thread because it typically has a little bit more stretch than cotton. For the pattern, you're gonna wanna get craft scissors, cut it out, don't use your sewing scissors for this. Ideally cut the top portion and keep it because it has the project name, the tutorial that it's paired with, the fit, the style, and also the amount of fabric you need for this project. The DIY fabric is tubular, so it's already got pre-made folds. So just place the place on fold tab right up to the edge. If you have your own fabric, make sure that the stretch is going horizontally so that the mask can stretch over your head. You can now clip it on, you can put weights on it, or you could pin it so that the pattern doesn't move. And then we're gonna cut out the fabric. Sometimes when we're working with patterns and fabric and we're at the cutting phase, we just use chalk and mark around the sewing pattern, take off the pattern, and then cut after. With knitwear, because there's some stretch to it, the chalk is going to be difficult to draw on because every time you try to make a mark, it's going to stretch and not give you a consistent straight line. What I did for this one was I just did tiny notches all along the pattern. This is how I traced the pattern onto the fabric, but even the fabric didn't retain the color as well. When I took the pattern off, you could see the lines are pretty faint. It's hard to see. So what I would do is leave the pattern on. Ideally, get a pair of rotary cutters so you can cut the fabric straight off the pattern. Rotary cutters for this are also pretty useful because you're cutting through two layers at once. Scissors are good too, but the problem is you have to lift the fabric up to get the second blade underneath, which means it could slightly shift the pattern. It could slightly shift the first or second layer of fabric, which is why a proper pair of rotary cutters and also a cutting mat might come clutch. Once it's all cut out, add some more clips around the edges to keep it all together. You can remove the pattern and we're moving on to part three, the sewing. A tip for sewing, don't pull at the fabric too hard because if you stretch the fabric, when it comes out, it's gonna be all distorted, the shape's gonna be off. So try to let the feed dogs do the work. We're gonna sew along the edge of the mask at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, and we're just gonna go from the eyes all the way around to the back. So let's get our work set up. I got my Singer Heavy Duty here, I'm gonna thread it, and I'm using a cross wound bobbin, so it's gonna be on a horizontal pin. We want to make sure all the settings are correct, so let's run through that. Let's start with the presser foot. This is a squishy stretch material, so if there's too much pressure on the presser foot, the material gets squished. This could lead to inconsistent stitches because the feed dogs are trying to pull the fabric through, but the presser foot is applying too much pressure so it's not feeding through smoothly. Most likely, you'll want to loosen the presser foot pressure. For my sewing machine, it's on the top. There's a button to loosen it. I would say put two layers of fabric underneath the presser foot, put the presser foot down, and then loosen the dial. For stitch tension, you'll probably want two to three depending on how lofty your knit is. You could also probably get away with a four if you have a heavy weight knit. For stitch width and length, we're gonna be doing a zigzag stitch. So get a piece of test material and try it out. Your fabric may respond better to smaller stitches. The reason we use a zigzag stitch is because a lot of knitwear has some stretch to it. So by doing a zigzag stitch, it allows the material to facilitate that stretch. If you only have a straight stitch option, use a straight stitch, but if you have the option to do a zigzag, use a zigzag. 
We'll start with the reverse stitch, three stitches forward, three stitches back. And then because we're not using a serger, I'm gonna have my needle drop just a bit past the edge of my fabric to tie in the ends. Go all the way around from the eyebrows to the back of the neck. Take your time, be steady with it. Don't pull too much. If you find yourself at a point where you think you're going off the rails, with the needle down, pull the presser foot up and just slightly turn it so you can get back on track. But just make sure that the needle's in the down position when you lift up that presser foot. And remember to back stitch at the end to close off the stitch as well. When you're done that, we wanna hide the raw edges. So we're gonna take the eye hole and the base of the ski mask. We're gonna take our chalk and ruler and we're gonna draw a line at three quarters of an inch. This will give us a guide so that when we do our three eighths of an inch seam allowance fold, we just match it up to the chalk line. You don't have to do a full line. You could just do marks. That way when it's time to fold it and iron it down, you know generally how much to fold it. Another helpful tip when you're dealing with a curve and you fold fabric back, it's not gonna fold perfectly because you have too much fabric for the fold. It's either a tight curve like the eye hole or it's a long curve. So we're gonna do one of two things. For the tight curve by the eye hole, we're just gonna cut two snips. They're gonna be just under 3 8 of an inch. And then for the bottom longer curve, we're gonna do these notches. I like to call them pizza slices because they're just little baby triangles. And that's gonna help us when we fold it back and iron because the fabric will now match up edge to edge, just like this. You have use your free arm so that you can get the curve a little bit easier and then we're gonna sew at three eighths of an inch seam allowance for both for the bottom of the mask I'm gonna keep doing the zigzag stitch but for the top of the mask because it's a top stitch and it's very noticeable it's in like center of attention of if you're looking at the mask I want to use a straight stitch for this just out of preference and because the eye holes not somewhere that's gonna be under a lot of stress if you're stretching it a straight stitch will do and we're done this is hands down one of the best tutorials to start getting into knitwear, especially if you want to do the boxy tee tutorial. When I drop that, start on this one because it's a simple pattern and it gets you used to working with the fabric. Subscribe so you can stay tuned when I drop the boxy tee tutorial. And until next time, peace.